Charles Hoskinson is doing it again as he continues to rip on XRP and Ripple Labs fans. This is the third big story I'm going to be reporting about him just completely being an ass towards the crypto community and bankruptcy stuff. It's the lawyers that make the money, not the credited or unaccredited investors. I've got a scary stat for you that deals with how much money lawyers make in these crypto bankruptcies. Hola everyone, happy Sunday morning to you. The heat map is mixed right now in color, but the reality is it's super red compared to any action over the last week, with Jerome Powell and the Fed dropping nasty hammers continuously on the market. FTX fallout, Binance worries, it's a huge mess. But first, Silvergate. Silvergate is extremely important because this is a US-based bank that has FTX fallout. And we weren't supposed to have FTX fallout in the United States because there were so many elites out there that were so proud of our system that protected banks. Silvergate's in trouble and this all has to do with aiding and abetting FTX fraud. And in fact, besides the fraud, Silvergate and all publicly traded companies out there must respond to the SEC, letting the SEC know if there actually was FTX fallout. But Silvergate Bank, basically what they're going through is a lawsuit where these people are saying you have did not do your due diligence with KYC AML, so we're going to go after you because you didn't properly vet Alameda and FTX. This crypto hot potato and this crypto blame game just keeps getting passed on down. Speaking of crypto hot potato, Celsius. Celsius declared bankruptcy way, way, way long ago. We're talking like over five months ago, everyone. Here's the bill. 50 $52 million. That's right, everyone. Leading UK law firm Kirkland and Ellis billed Celsius for $20 million from July to October. White and Case LLP representing Celsius creditors asked for $10.2 million. Alvarez and Marshall North America, the debtor's financial advisor, asked for $6.5 million. The post Celsius lawyers' advisors want 52 million for four months of work. That's right, everyone. The reason I wanted to bring up the bankruptcy costs that these lawyers are billing, because think of the Ripple Labs XRP case versus the SEC. Brad Garlinghouse said, hey, months ago, if the court case were to end in 2022, we would be spending about $100 million on legal fees. Holy crap. But we know now the court case is going to go well into 2023. Expect the bill for Ripple Labs to be anywhere from 150 to 200 million dollars when all is said and done. If we don't get summary judgment, that bill is going to be way, way higher, everyone. Think of all the money that went to lawyers rather than ecosystem development. The lawyers always win. So even if you are accredited or unaccredited investor in this mess, the lawyers get their money first. So with all of this crypto winner, crypto hot potato contagion going on, the lawyers always make money, everyone. Just remember that they always make money. So now let's move on over from Celsius billing woes to Charles Hotskinson being an ass yet again. Seriously, if by now you aren't tired of this guy, I, I don't know what it's going to take. Charles Hotskinson says XRP provides no technical value and he is ready to move on. Dude, you should have moved on a while ago. Two months ago, I did a story where Hodgkinson said that XRP Ripple Labs fans out there were conspiracy theorists thinking that the SEC was going after him. He made these public comments. Now, I, I get it. A lot of you out there are like, so what? What does it matter that Charles says? He's a big public figure in the space, whether you like him or not. What he says carries weight with a lot of people. When you are a high up figure, you have to watch what you say because it can be defamatory, misleading, and so forth. Even someone like me, I just cannot go out and just go blatantly lying about people because there's people that watch my content and believe what I say. So I actually have to hold true to what I say in my reporting. Hodgkinson is not one of those people. In fact, this is what he said. Hodgkinson rushed to defend himself right away, saying that there is no point in inviting toxicity into your life and that is abusive and pointless. He also added that XRP provides no partnership or technical value and called its community toxic and unimportant. This is someone out there in crypto that is saying, hey, the community is toxic and unimportant. We do not need to be divided at this point. There is so much negative pressure right now in crypto. You've got Congress people out there just chopping at the bit to ban it. Governments around the world want to go after every crypto thing, whether it's heavy taxes or outright bannings. 
Hodgkinson, you're not helping the crypto community as a whole by throwing shade on XRP. And again, this is the third big story I've done with this in relation to Charles specifically ripping on XRP and XRP holders. S seriously, Charles Hodgkinson needs to work on bringing unity to the crypto community, not dividing us even further. It's just not going to work that way. He's done three horrible things here as of late directly towards XRP community, XRP holders. The first was he said that, hey, look, the stuff with the SEC, XRP holders, look, you guys are all conspiracy theorists. He literally said that about the XRP community saying, hey, the SEC isn't just targeting you. They're, they're doing this fairly, okay? They're, they're not just singling you out. The second one, he said, he perpetuated the settlement rumors on the 15th. That put Brad Garlinghouse and the whole Ripple Labs team in a horrible spot because he, we all knew it was fake, okay? But there were some people out there that believed it. Seriously, look at the comments and look at all the other videos out there. People are like, whoa, Charles would know he's in the know. He's not even part of Team XRP. And he's like, whoa, 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 there, there's maybe a settlement on the 15th. Brad Garlinghouse, right? Joel Schwartz, all the big people over at Ripple Labs, they, they couldn't go out there and publicly say, no, there's no settlement. That would have tanked the price even further and would have totally gotten rid of a bunch of support out there and a bunch of hope. He set them up to fail. In his third one saying that XRP holders and XRP Ripple Labs is toxic and unimportant is yet the third piece of his most recent speakings where he has publicly come out and ripped on Ripple Labs and XRP holders. This guy is losing faith even in his own community. His own community came out to defend XRP saying, hey, there's a bunch of us that own XRP and ADA. So Charles, why are you ripping on us? And I, I would say a lot of you are like that too. Comment down below. Do you own more than one crypto? If you do, stuff like this is super important. We cannot have the big leaders of crypto out there dividing us even further as we've got the government, institutions, and a whole bunch of fudsters out there trying to divide us anyways. It's super frustrating. And the leaders out there in crypto, whether you're a mini, 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 tiny leader with super minimal influence, like a channel like myself with 12,000 subs, or someone like Charles where millions of people watch you, you have to watch what you say and you have to do what is best for the crypto community. Charles, you need to go. You're doing more harm than good. If you want to learn about why pricing is going to be rough here for the next several months, oh, I mean a long time, this is the video right here. It goes in depth about what the Fed said economic projection wise when it comes to GDP and inflation. 2023 is going to be a mess. 2024 is going to be bad. 2025 might have some relief. Check that video out, everyone. Until more news breaks, I'm going to chill out. Have a great rest of your Sunday. You cool cats, take care.